As we've indicated, calcification is only part of the puzzle when it comes to understanding the carbonate equilibrium or balance of coral reefs. Large scale factors such as storms and the activities of specific coral reef organisms contribute to the process of removing calcium carbonate from the structure of coral reefs. The processes of removing calcium carbonate from reefs is referred to as decalcification. Now decalcification is a function of the chemistry of seawater, physical impacts such as storms and the activities of organisms such as grazing parrotfish and organisms which bore into the calcium carbonate structures of corals and other organisms. Now one factor that influences that tendency for calcium carbonate to remain or disappear from carbonate reefs is the pH and carbonate chemistry of seawater. The carbonate chemistry of seawater depends on the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere. As carbon dioxide builds up in seawater, for example, the concentration of carbonate ions declines. This affects the overall availability of carbonate ions for the deposition of minerals such as aragonite and calcite. The lower the carbonate ion concentration, the easier it is for processes that result in the dissolution of carbonate ions to occur. This issue will be revisited several times in this course when we come to discuss the impacts of ocean warming and acidification. Physical impacts such as storms can have a major impact on coral reefs through the breakage and destruction of reef building coral communities and the reefs that they build. Storms such as cyclones, typhoons and hurricanes can completely decimate coral reefs, as shown in this photograph here. However, if events like big storms don't happen very often, coral reefs can naturally recover from them. And so a storm might hit a reef like this one, but over 10 to 20 years, those corals will come back and rebuild the coral community. Well, an additional factor that affects the rate of decalcification is the impact of biological processes of erosion of carbonate stocks from reefs. In this case, there are two broad categories of biologically eroding organisms. The first category are the so-called external biological eroders, such as grazing parrotfish and sea urchins. These organisms either eat coral directly or chew on pieces of substrate that inadvertently uh, are eroded from the surface of the reef. Now constant grazing can remove enormous amounts of calcium carbonate over time and it's a very significant contributor to the carbonate sands that we see behind us here. In addition to external bioeroding organisms, there are a large range of uh, algae and invertebrates that like to bore into living and dead calcium carbonate skeletons. In this regard, there are microalgae, there are sponges, there are worms, barnacles and mollusks that use a range of different techniques to bore into the skeletons of, of corals and other calcifying organisms. Now this directly reduces the structural integrity of coral skeletons, leading to their eventual removal from the reef by storms. Explore the following model and complete the quiz. What you see in front of you is a representation of the different factors which affect the extent to which calcium carbonate builds up on the coral reefs or not. Adjust the various variables to explore what happens when you change them in terms of the carbonate balance of coral reefs. Now here are some issues to consider. Do a range of experiments to explore the influence of different factors. First, have a look at what happens when you increase the temperature. Now have a look at what happens when you reduce the amount of light. What happens when you increase atmospheric CO2? When you've completed the quiz, come back to the lecture.